What's up everyone, Tara Roberts here with Fantasy Pros and today I am counting down 10 more sleepers to help you win your fantasy drafts. But before we get started, we have a contest winner to announce. And the winner of the autographed Marquez Valdez Scantling jersey courtesy of pristineauction.com is Hype Sports. Please get in touch with our customer support agents at mailbag at fantasypros.com with your mailing address and proof of your subscription to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel and we will get that jersey shipped out to you. Again, the winner is Hype Sports, congratulations. And now that we've got that squared away, let's go ahead and give away another jersey. That's right, if you want a chance to win a signed Javante Williams Denver Broncos jersey, courtesy of our friends at Pristine Auction, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now, comment below on this video, and that's it. We will be announcing the winner right here on the channel, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize. Now let's go ahead and dive in. Coming in at number 10, Jalen Tolbert. He might not have been one of the top prospects in the 2022 draft, but make no mistake, Jalen Tolbert is a promising talent who has stumbled into a golden opportunity. Dallas is a prolific offense, leading the NFL in total offense in 2021, and second only to Tampa Bay in total pass yards. The reports coming out of camp have been fantastic for Tolbert, with Michael Gallup still recovering from a torn ACL and James Washington suffering a broken foot during training camp. Tolbert can make an immediate impact as a week one starter opposite of CeeDee Lamb. And if he can earn the trust of Dak Prescott, he can carry that momentum through the remainder of the season even when Gallup returns and is ready to play. Even as the third receiving option, Tolbert would still be well worth his current ADP. Number 9, Jahan Dotson Despite having an incredible final season at Penn State with nearly 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns, Jahan Dotson didn't exactly have the same level of draft and offseason buzz of his flashier peers like Garrett Wilson, Drake London, and Traylon Burks. Going to the Commanders, a team led by Carson Wentz, wasn't exactly the best landing spot, but Dotson has had a fantastic offseason. With Terry McLaurin in contract negotiations much of the offseason, Dotson had the opportunity to show off his capabilities with Carson Wentz and didn't disappoint. Washington has a clear hole at wide receiver two, and at this point, Dotson is a locked-in starter. At number eight, Kenneth Gainwell. The Eagles' offseason moves have been to reinforce their passing game, but the running game will still be a primary focus for the Eagles because their 2021 work on the ground was immaculate, with a total of over 2,700 yards and 25 touchdowns. The downside is their run game is a clear committee, but the upside is that it presents the opportunity to snag discounted value in one of the league's best ground games. All the news coming out about Kenneth Gainwell in camp is very positive. And while his 2021 usage was very inconsistent, Gainwell did see five touchdowns on the ground, one through the air, and 33 receptions on 50 targets. Gainwell will have the opportunity now to provide weekly value and be a solid handcuff as well. Coming in at number seven, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Marquez Valdez-Scantling is a very intriguing pick this year, especially if you play in standard leagues. With the exit of Tyreek Hill, the Chiefs have opted to replace part of his production with Valdez Scantley, likely playing the deep threat role within the Chiefs' offense. MVS will not be a high volume reception guy, but he can be a home run hitter for the Chiefs and that's a great position to be in. He has a 17.5 yards per reception career average, and Patrick Mahomes will be able to capitalize on those numbers while MVS racks up on air yards. Coming in at number six, Damian Pierce. If you're opting to go Hero RB or Zero RB, you need to take a look at Damian Pierce. The Texans were dead last in team rush yards with just over 1,400 yards and only eight touchdowns. They added Marlon Mack this offseason, while he does figure to be the guy pushing to be the lead back. Reports out of training camp have been that Pierce has shown good vision and power and will have the opportunity to compete for a role. The running back room is wide open, and a couple of good preseason games could help push Pierce up the depth chart in an offense that could be a bit more competitive than people are giving it credit. At number five, Cole Komet. There's nothing wrong with grabbing one of the top tight ends in early rounds, but it is just as viable of a strategy to try and identify which of the late round tight ends will work their way into the top five, because it happens every single year. Cole Komet is one of those guys who has the upside and opportunity to have a breakout season. 
In 2021, Komet had 60 receptions on 93 targets for just over 600 yards, but unfortunately was unable to find the end zone. But that is set to change in 2022 now that the Bears have fully committed to Komet as the primary tight end. Komet will have the opportunity to be the second option in the offense behind Darnell Mooney. You want to target tight ends with high volume opportunities. Expect Komet to have an increase in targets and red zone opportunities to push his way into a top five finish. Coming in at number four, Chris Olave. While others are opting to draft Michael Thomas, I am opting to pass on Thomas and draft Saints rookie Chris Olave. Olave's skill sets align to being one of the most NFL ready receivers of the 2022 rookie class. Olave can excel in the slot, but what sold me on Olave's immediate impact on the field is his deep threat ability. Lack of receiving options in early 2021 impacted the Saints' ability to air the ball out, and Chris Olave will help solve that problem. Olave will be an incredibly versatile receiver in an offense that is looking to bounce back with Jameis Winston at the helm. Coming in at number three, Alan Lazard. The Packers are entering their post Devontae Adams era, and they have expressed they have no intentions of adding any big names heading into the season. That leaves the Packers offense in dire need of a wide receiver one, and my bet is on Alan Lazard. Let's keep expectations in check because this is a very different wide receiver one than Devontae Adams. The Packers are likely to spread targets around their entire receiving core and running backs as well, so I don't have high target expectations for Lazard, but where I think the value for Lazard pays off is in the red zone. Lazard had 40 receptions on 60 targets, 513 yards, and 8 touchdowns in 2021. Five of those touchdowns came weeks 14 through 18. He ranked in the top 20 of fantasy points scored in the red zone in 2021. Increased red zone opportunities could yield major results for Alan Lazard. And with Camp Buzz growing around Romeo Dobbs, Lazard's ADP will remain very reasonable and he will be a fantastic steal for his potential output. At number two, Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore's rookie season was a bit limited due to multiple injuries, but we saw more than enough to know that the talent is real with Moore. In between his injury stints weeks 7 through 14, Moore was the wide receiver 9 in average points per game with 17.7. That average was more than receivers currently going 50 picks ahead of him. If he can maintain even close to that level of production, he will smash his ADP. The skepticism around Moore isn't a talent issue, it's that he plays for the Jets. His quarterback is Zach Wilson, and it's hard to ignore the potential of Garrett Wilson. But there is tremendous upside with Moore, and I do expect him to operate as the team's wide receiver one. Coming in at number one, Juju Smith-Schuster. Juju Smith-Schuster is a proven talent that is getting a massive upgrade at quarterback. The unfortunate decline in his production and advanced statistics is closely tied to the decline in Ben Roethlisberger. But with Patrick Mahomes' Juju, who is only 25 years old, by the way, is looking to reignite his career and become the primary target behind Travis Kelsey. At his best, we've seen Juju be a 100-plus reception guy, and we've seen him be incredibly productive in the red zone, like in 2020, where he caught 15 of 19 targets inside the 20 for six touchdowns. There's no reason that he can't return to that same level of production. Given the role that he'll play within the Kansas City offense, he'll have the opportunity to rack up on targets in one of the league's most potent offenses. Thank you for watching this video. Remember, if you want a chance to win a signed Javante Williams Denver Broncos jersey, courtesy of our friends at Pristine Auction, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now, comment below on this video, and that's it. We will be announcing the winner right here on the channel, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.